Okay, so all of the molds I make, I make with uh, black organic rubber. Uh, they come in two pieces. This is the bottom. Uh, here's the top. Uh, you can see it's got a hole already uh, pre poked in here, and then I've got a prior vulcanized chunk of rubber that fits in there, but you'll see that later. Uh, the first thing you should know about these is, is it's a big it's a disc, it's a 9 inch disc. As you can see, if I can zoom in here, it's goopy. Not totally goopy, it's not liquid, but it's soft. So, the first thing I normally do is I lay out the mold, and I've already done this layout uh, prior to starting this video, is just to get sort of a rough idea of how everything will fit in the mold. Uh, right now I'm just slapping it down because I already know what it's going to do in my head. This is just an example for you guys. Uh, and this is what I call a trash mold. Um, what I really need to make this mold for are the Quar 15mm Cavalry Masters, which, as you can see, doesn't fill this mold. Uh, so I'm filling it up with a bunch of other crap. Uh, hence the name trash mold. Not a true production mold. Uh, just a mold full of odds and ends. And, I don't know, maybe every three or four molds I end up doing this just because I get out of sync. I only have a couple pieces that I need to use. Um, okay, so next I'm going to put it in the can and start the video again. Okay, so this is the mold can. Uh, as you can see, I've taken four three-inch bolts and I've run them up through the can. Uh, if you remember from the first video, Got a nice uh, washer on there as a spacer. Uh, right, so I do that, and then I usually put a piece of mold paper. These are in the box of molds over here that separate the mold pieces, and I put those in the bottom just to keep the mold from sticking to the can when I pull it out. I'll put the bottom half uh, seated in there, and I'll just show you a little bit of this. Put my center form in the middle. And then we'll test my layout again just to sort of get the figures in here. So, what I'm going to do in this next step is I'm going to lay out these figures. Uh, some of them are going to require me to cut into the mold, the mold blank. Uh, and that's uh, to support bits, like you can see these uh, have spear shafts that are sort of riding above the plane of the mold there so when I squeeze this thing together I don't want those to bend so I'll build up a little bit of uh, mold underneath it by cutting from somewhere else and building it up underneath there uh, and then I'll put the acorn nuts so again I'll turn the video off uh, do those steps and turn it back on again okay again here it is all laid out in the can uh, you can see I've got the cap nuts here along the edge uh, we're going to use those for registration um, so that the mold only fits together one way. Uh, the other thing you can see I have over here is I use this little tab of pewter. There's got to be a better way to do this, but this is my do-it-yourself. Uh, that's in there so that after the mold vulcanizes and I pop it out of the can, it is stuck together. Um, and I can find that along the edge and pry that out, and I, I know I have an easy place to find the two halves and split it apart. Um, the reason it doesn't completely stick together is I'm going to take the top here and I'm going to put a layer of talc uh, onto this, a thin layer, uh, and then a thin layer uh, with the, the cap here. This is already vulcanized, this is hard. Uh, and that thin layer of talc will keep these two mold halves from sticking together and being one solid piece where you can never get your figures out. So the next thing I'm going to show you is the mold all closed up. Okay, so here it is all closed up. <clears throat> you can see uh, I've still got the four, four bolts, and I have four rather large C-clamps. Uh, the bolts are actually pointless. Uh, the bolts are just there, well, pointless at this stage. The bolts are just there so I could close the mold. I could actually pull it down most of the way closed. So I basically do that first with the four bolts, uh, slowly tightening the nuts all the way around uh, until it's it's closed. And then I put the C-clamps on. and now the the nuts are basically superfluous. They don't they don't mean a whole lot. Um, early when I was learning this whole do-it-yourself thing, I only had bolts through it, uh, and the intense pressure buildup would actually pop 
the washers, the bolts, and the nuts completely off, and they would, you could hear them banging around in my oven as they popped off uh, from across the room. Uh, so now I put the C-clamps, and also the first C-clamps I had were less heavy duty than these, uh, and it would actually split the C-clamps in half. So there's a lot of pressure buildup. So again, giant C-clamps, four bolts, uh, now we're about to put it in the oven at 320 degrees for two hours. Uh, and so the next thing I'll show you will be after we crack the mold open. First let me apologize for my voice. I woke up with a cold this morning, although maybe the audio quality will be such crap that you can't even tell. Alright, so I cooked this mold last night for two hours at 320 degrees, and then I let it sit overnight in the oven. Uh, I've already popped it out of <clears throat> the mold can, um, just so I get that done. Uh, and then I've already split it in half. You can see my little mark here uh, where I put the shield in the last part so I could <clears throat> quickly find the the halves and I could split it apart. So you can see now there's no gates in there. It's just the raw impressions of the figure. So I'm going to cut it in stages. I'm going to cut all the gates first and then I'll turn the recorder back on. Then I'll cut some of the air vents. Uh, and then we'll run it and see what happens. Alright guys, this is where the hard part is. Some of the voodoo comes in. Uh, a lot of how I gate <coughs> has to do with my machine and its speed and <coughs> that sort of thing. Everybody gates a little differently, but I think the basics are going to be similar whether you're doing it yourself or not. Uh, so for instance, let's take a look at, if I can focus in here, this quarter cavalry. You can see I cut the gate at the back. And the reason for that is you gotta remember, as we talked about in the first video, the metal fills from the outside in. And if I had to put the gate up here at the front, the metal is everywhere to go. Right? It's gonna go here and maybe it'll fill it back back this half as it splashes back. But it'll be hard to get the back half of this figure. So I'll gate into the back so as the metal will actually flow back this way and hopefully fill most of the figure up and what it doesn't fill which is probably going to be the corners of these bases will build vents which we'll do in the top half of the mold this is the bottom as you can see all the cavalry I brought it into the back <clears throat> some little 15 mil quar and then here if you remember in the first video these are some small parts so because I don't have very little speed not a big deal I just cut a break into the mold so the metal comes out it's going to take a little speed hit as it hits here and then move left and right to fill into these heads. Uh, you can see I've also done that here. So again, this is how I deal with not having a variable speed. never bothered me. I just build a little break into there for the small parts. Um, you can see, again, this is where the shield was. And if I can rotate around, I've cut a notch into there. You can see and I've cut a notch into the top as well so that they're easy to line up. Now. I've gone ahead and I've done the vents in the top here I know I'm going to do. Uh, as we were talking earlier with the the quar bases on the cavalry, I know that's going to be hard to fill, so I've gone ahead and vented that out to the edge and also the little feather in his cap and, and the tail of the mount. Here I've done it from the spear and the base, spear and the base, spear and the base. The head's probably going to need it. It's a straight shot. These legs and arm bits probably are going to need a straight shot. Again, the same with these little heads. They're probably not going to need any venting at all. Uh, I've done a little bit with the core base. I probably need to do it uh, with the ends of the barrels here, uh, which I'll do in just a second, and then we'll spin the mold, and I'll show you what it looks like uh, when I open it up. All right, I talked the mold, uh, which I neglected to show you in the casting video. I apologize for that. Uh, and I've run it for the first time here. Now, my guess is... Not everything's going to have filled. Um, molds run better when they're warm, uh, and also because I've only made one pass at gating and venting, it's probably not going to be great. So I'm going to try to open it up on film here. It'll be a surprise to all of us. Um, camera make it a little jiggly as I try to open it up with one hand, but let's see what happens. Wow. Okay. I lied. Look at that. Uh, except for the little camera there. Looks like we got good cast of the cavalry. The 15s, uh, one of the little heads, 
Little arms and legs. All of these heads look fine. So it actually looks uh, like I know what I'm doing. Pretty surprising, huh? Always shocks me. Alright, well then I won't bother running in and showing you. The little camera's going to be easy to fix. All I'll do, let me find a pointing device. All I'll probably do is vent a little bit coming out of there. Uh, and that head probably just had too small a gate going in. It probably doesn't need a vent. But there you go.